Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Nice to see you again, Pamela. Won't you just sit down? Schultz will be right back. Mr. Collins, I'm here to see you. Uh, look. To extend to you an invitation. I'm t uh, An invitation to what? <laughs> to live. Well, thank you. I accept. Then you'll come to the woods with me. C come where? <laughs> the fields, the forests, the meadows. There to frolic with spring and me. Look, come here. Pamela, I'm so busy. You, you saw all the girls. The I years have... of the spring, the days of the morn, the larks on the wing. Snails on the thorn. Look, <laughs> snails? No, no, those are cars on the freeway. <laughs> I like you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's a magnetism about you. <laughs> yes, apparently. You've never seen this side of me, have you? Well, yes, I... To you, I've always been the prim, precise secretary. Uh -huh. Efficiency yourself. Mm -hmm. Miss Busy Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're pretty busy, all right. Today, I am as a woman possessed. Uh -huh. Spring has turned my blood to wine. Well, Pamela, don't pop your cork here. I have work to do. <laughs> Look. Bob. You see? You see? All the girls are waiting. Please, Pamela. Let's play hooky. No, no, I can't. I can't. Oh, every boy loves to play hooky. Pam, no, not from teachers like these. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to work, Bob. Yeah, yeah we'll be Let working. Let me tempt you once more. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. I know of a venerable oak tree in Griffith Park. Uh-huh. We climb to the very tip top. I think I can promise you an intimate glimpse of not one. Uh-huh. Not two, but not two. three tufted titmouse eggs. Tufted? <laughs> 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 Pamela, I uh... Come on, Bob. It's bikini time. It's bikini time. <laughs> Which shall it be? Work or play? Pamela, I tell you, you, you've given me just a murderous decision. It's just murderous. But work comes first. Girls, get into your bikinis. I'll be right in. How strong you are. <laughs> However, I still have an ace in the hole. Look, <laughs> Pamela. They say that one picture is worth a thousand words. Uh -huh. Mr. Collins, I defy you to resist the excitement Look. of this on-the-scene photograph of... The green-tailed towhee preparing for motherhood. Pamela, it just doesn't mean any. <laughs> Bewitching creature, isn't she? Yes, yes. What, what is her name? The green-tailed towhee. <laughs> the girl. That is I. She's... No, the, the, the other girl, this one. Oh, that is Cecily Allen. She lives in my apartment building. She's only recently come over from England. Cecily Allen. And this girl, you say, is interested in, in, in bird watching? Definitely. Well, Mr. Collins, has the mother toe he'd done what I couldn't do? Are you ready now to romp with me across the fields and into the woods? I'm sorry, Pamela, but duty calls, business comes first. Gad, what willpower? <laughs> Mr. Collins. Oh, yes? I warn you. Spring and I are a formidable team of temptresses. Uh -huh. We'll not let you rest. All of a sudden, your heart will sing, and you'll heed the call of Pam and Spring. <laughs> what? Oh, excuse me. No, 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 not you. Uh, could you connect me with the... Uh, Miss Cecily Allen's apartment, please. Yes, thank you very much. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Mr. Robert Collins telephoned. Naturally. He wishes to see me. Naturally. To chat about bird watching. Naturally. <laughs> bird watching? Yes, I understand he's quite an expert on the subject. Cecily? Yes? 
Robert. John. Likewise. Chelsea. Stu Joe. Right. Naturally. Well, well, well. So, so you're Cecil. Yes. How did you happen to hear about me? Oh, you're, you're quite a star in ornithological circles, you know. Oh, you know, I hardly <laughs> deserve that sort of billing. On the contrary, you're one of the best bill bird watchers I've ever seen. <laughs> I say, that's awfully decent of you. Not at all. Cecily, tell me, is spring to you what it is to me? Well, uh, what is it to you? An invitation to live. Come here. The years at the spring, the days at the morn, the lark's on the wing and the snail's on the floor. Robert Browning? Robert Collins. Oh, you mean the, 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 the poem? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, somehow I feel that Browning really must have understood bird watchers like us. Oh, definitely, yeah. An outdoor lover. <laughs> yes. You know, speaking of outdoor loving, I mean, lo loving the outdoors, <laughs> uh, why don't you and I go to Griffith Park and do a bit of bird watching? Do you remember Browning's Immortal? Oh, Oh, to be in England now that April's there. Yeah, lovely thing, lovely thing. In, in Griffith Park... And whoever would... wakes in England ah. sees some morning unaware the lowest boughs and the brushwood sheep. In, in Griffith Park... Round the elm tree bowl or in tiny leaf. In, in Griffith Park... And the chaffin sings on the orchard bough in England. Now. Now? <laughs> Look, in Griffith Park, I think I can promise you a peek at the cunning little nest of the tawny-throated pippet. <laughs> oh, but I'm so sorry. I have work to do. So far. Let's play hooky. Uh, some other time. Meanwhile, it's been awfully nice meeting you. I do hope you'll continue to think of me as a fellow bird watcher. Well, I much prefer to think of you as a girl bird watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I say that's rather good. Good enough? Afraid not. So sorry. No harm. Rain check? All right. Good show. <laughs> Ta da. Pip pip. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, wow. Who watches the bird watcher while the bird watcher watches the bird? Let's just shoot a few pictures, shall we? Think you remember Howard? <laughs> Bob's coming home for lunch today? No, Margaret. He went to lunch with Bill Lear. Mr. Lear wants him to photograph flying saucers. Flying saucers? Where, Mom? Where? Where's where the flying saucers? Oh, please. Where, Mom? Sh show me. Show Quiet. me. Quiet. You wouldn't think that a scientist like Bill Lear would believe in flying saucers? Oh, I do, Mom. Absolutely. Quiet. <laughs> well, he seems to have an open mind on the subject. <laughs> yeah, well, good. Okay, bye-bye, Schultz. I'll see you. I didn't know you were so interested in flying saucers. Oh, sure, Mom. I, I just hope someday I'll be the one who makes it fly. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, your dream has come true. There is a whole sink full of them. Make them fly. <laughs> Bob, I don't say there are saucers. I don't say there aren't. All I say is, come along this afternoon and uh, bring your camera. What? Oh, uh, come where, Bill? Up to the uh, Griffith Park Observatory. That's where the last sightings were made. Bill, this is the only kind of heavenly body I photograph. <laughs> Let's face it, you just want to be alone with this beautiful girl. That's right. I prefer a dish to a saucer. Be right with you, honey. <laughs> uh... Bill, look, take this camera, it's loaded with film, and this light meter, and go to Griffith Park Observatory Bob, and make it. I wouldn't know how to photograph anything. Well, that's all right. There won't be anything to photograph. <laughs> Bob, Bob, how can a pilot like you ignore the testimony of other pilots who have reported UFO sightings? Bill, the Air Force has been able to explain 98% of those sightings. And what about the other 2%? What about those latest sightings at Griffith Park Observatory? Bob, don't you want to photograph a UFO? Oh, Bill, I plan to. This lovely little unidentified female object. <laughs> the models have not returned from lunch? Only me. Charmaine, unidentified body, Schultz. <laughs> oh, day in, day out, it's always a ball. <laughs> Uh, 
Pamela. Mr. Collins. Re yeah. I've returned to tempt you again. Mm -hmm. Are you tempted? Quite a little, yes. Splendid. <laughs> Pamela, I'm still tied up. Mr. Collins, I, I predict when you see what I have here, you will stack your bonds. If, if, if Look, you could a bird watching outfit. What? Pamela. Not mine. Look. That's North, huh? <laughs> well, I'll admit, I'll admit, this is a bond snapper, but I'm so busy. I'm I could so... meet you in the park later. Suppose I wait for you in front of the zoo. L listen, boy. Pamela, if I were you, I wouldn't hang around the zoo in this outfit. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. The zoo is no place for cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's as good an explanation as any, I guess, yes. <laughs> you forget what a devil may care mood I'm in today. I, I can see it. Look, mm -hmm. sneakers to facilitate tree climbing. Tree climbing? Remember the tuft of titmouse eggs I promised you? Oh. I atop the venerable oak in Griffith Park. <laughs> Griffith Park? Oh, yeah, uh, Pamela, wait right here. I think I can arrange something. I knew you'd weaken. Uh-huh. What was it? The titmouse eggs, or spring, or the cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> well, Pamela, to tell you the truth, they, they all took their toll. No, no, no. You see, I, I have a friend in the studio, and he'd make a much better companion than I. His name is Bill Lear. Now, if Mr. I can... Mr. Collins. Young. I do not climb a tree with just any man. Oh, God, you do like being out on a limb with Bill Lear. Well, he's a great potential bird watcher. Got eyes like a hawk. One does not fly with the hawk. No. When one can soar with the eagle. Oh, can you <laughs> go for this hawk. You'll go for it. Understand? <laughs> But in my opinion, it's within the realm of possibility that we could be under observation by creatures from another planet. Really? Mm -hmm. And another... Oh, speak to you for just a moment. <clears throat> Sorry. Bill, if you're interested in creatures from another planet, <laughs> I have just the girl for you. What do you mean? An observer trained to identify flying objects. Oh, Bob, we want to go soccer oh, watching yeah, with Mr. Lear. Hold, 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 hold it! <laughs> now, now, look, I'm awfully sorry, but this calls for someone with a great deal of experience, someone who knows her way around Griffith Park. Well, that's me. In the daytime. Now, look, all of you run into the dressing room and change into your play clothes outfits immediately. Now, Bill, look, this girl is just perfect for you, and she's got all the necessary equipment. Well, they didn't exactly shortchange Shirley. <laughs> Can you get your mind back on science? <laughs> Joining us? Us? Yes, I've been invited to go bird watching. I didn't think I could get off, but uh, I managed. Good. We'll have a foursome. You fly with the hawk, and I'll soar with the eagle. <laughs> I don't follow you. That's the idea. We want to be alone. <laughs> Especially, Sess, I'm I'm in a reckless mood today. <laughs> Tell me more about this foursome. Your companion will be a Mr. Lear. Oh, I'd rather thought I was going with a Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins belongs to me. Well, he was the one who invited Cecily. me. Cecily! Ordinarily, I'm not a bellicose person. However, if you persist in making an issue of this thing... How about me? <laughs> Sam, really, now it's not that important. Well, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I'm Bill Lear. Cecily Allen. Yes, I know. Bob's been telling me about you. How do you do? I believe we're teaming up for Griffith Park. Oh, so he's not only certain I'd return, but he chose my company. How do you do? I'm awfully glad he did. I'm not pleased myself. You know, uh, Bob's description didn't half do you justice. You know, I'm beginning to form quite an active dislike for Mr. Collins. Oh, I could tell you things about Bob that'll make you hate him. And, uh, you know something? I may. How do you do? See you later. If you could find us. <laughs> <laughs> Who invited the forest ranger? <laughs> Girls, the, the, these turned out just wonderfully. Now, let me see. We'll get the, uh, oh yeah, the sports shots. Okay, now there'll be golf, tennis, basketball, 
of um, <laughs> time out. <laughs> now, where is Bill Lear? You, He's on route to Griffith Park with Cecily. You were... Sp <laughs> the, the, the bundle from Britain? Bill, Bill, Bill Lear is with her? Yes, they seem to get on rather well. Look, she shouldn't be alone with him. He, he's a wolf. You didn't object to sending me out alone with him? Well, that's different. You're armed. Yeah, I, I mean, with sophistication and experience, you're, you're a woman of the world, Pamela. Mr. Collins. Huh? May I tell you something in strictest confidence? Yes. Following a field trip, Cecily Allen was expelled from the Nottingham chapter of the Finch Fanciers. Really? Well, what, what was that for? for fancying something other than a finch. <laughs> Beneath that cool, dignified exterior, Cecily Allen is a very earthy woman. Uh -huh. There now. Feel better? Heaps. Just heaps. Come on, we're going bird watching. Darn it, I forgot. My car's in the garage. All right, we'll use mine. I'll <laughs> use... So, General Shoup called Bob on the carpet and he said, uh, Captain Collins, if you become involved with one more girl, I'll break you down to a lieutenant. And did that make him come about? I'll put it this way. They still talk about the party the girls threw for Private Collins. Oh, what disgraceful behavior. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, of course, there's the... Uh, the story of Bob's escapade with the Austrian countess, but uh, I hardly think that's for your delicate ear. Try this one. <laughs> Mr. Collins, you haven't heard anything yet. She was also severely reprimanded by the president of the British Bird Watcher Society. Oh, well, what was that for? Seems that Cecily, in a mixed group, volunteered to observe the nocturnal habits of the owl. Yes? The owls wound up observing Cecily. <laughs> she, she really taught him how to hoot, huh? <laughs> Mr. Collins, if you want the stark truth, her father, a member of the British peerage, sent her to this country for a cooling off period. Look, Pamela, won't this thing go any faster? I want to catch her, find her before she cools off. Yeah, to save Bill, you understand. <laughs> he didn't catch Bob. He didn't? No, sir. Bob jumped out the castle window and climbed down some vines. But what Bob didn't realize was that now he was in the Russian zone. The minute he hit the ground, a Russian sergeant was covering him with a machine gun. Good heavens! Bob couldn't speak a word of Russian. But he convinced that sergeant to sneak him across the line back into the American zone. Whatever did he do to break down a Russian sergeant? Nobody knows. She wouldn't even tell her own court-martial. So she hasn't really had an opportunity to, shall we say, cut loose since she came here. Uh-huh. You ask me, Mr. Collins, she's just a bundle of dynamite, waiting to be ignited. Well, I'm just the punk who can do it. Here, Pamela, let me drive. I know a shortcut. Yeah, wolves may come and wolves may go, but that Bob Collins is the worst. Sounds like a priceless cad. Shall we go? Uh, why don't we sit here for a while? Uh, perhaps they'll come along. Who? Huh? Um, the, uh, horses. Mr. Collins, is he really worth saving? Oh, absolutely. He's, he's one of my dearest friends. Whoop. Hang on. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see anything sitting here. No, I'm beginning to give up myself. Let's walk over to the observatory, look through the telescope. Oh, it's getting rather late. Perhaps we'd better start back. Maybe we'll meet them on the road. The saucers? Hmm? Oh, uh, well, there have been stories of them landing. Besides, I want to get back to Mr. Collins' studio. Really? <laughs> yes, I left something there. Now I see I should have brought along. <laughs> Oh, here we are. 
See, I, I told you the road wasn't too far. Look at my beautiful Jeep stuck in the creek. Now, don't worry about it. As soon as we get to a phone, I'll call the auto club. Oh, look, here comes the car. Oh, I'll, I'll give... I'll give him some cheesecake. Pamela, I wouldn't... <laughs> Oh, thanks, Million Bill. What a break you're happening along. You're a sight for sore eyes. Please have my thanks, too, Mr. Lear. And uh, don't forget, Mr. Collins wants to stop at the first telephone. I'll pull into this filling station down here and drop Bob off. Oh, no, that, that won't be necessary, Bill. I, I can phone when you take Cecily back to my studio. I'm not taking Cecily back to your studio. I'm taking her to her apartment so she can change for dinner. Oh, oh well, then I can call from her apartment. You're not getting out there, either. You can use the telephone in my apartment, Mr. Collins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, come to think of it, I I'll need my membership number and the cards at home. Oh, very well. Say we'll phone from there. Really, Pamela? What for? For conduct unbecoming to a bird watcher. Oh, now, now look, Pamela, uh, Bill doesn't want to hear about Cecily. Mr. If Collins, he... I thought you wanted to save him from her. Yeah, I'll tell you more. I want to be saved. No, no, there is a time. Now, we're almost to my house. I'll slow down. Of course, there is the incident of Cecily's moonlight swim after a mallard. Oh, Pamela, don't. A mallard? <laughs> you yeah, haven't heard about that. Well, Mr. Collins, that is the spiciest story of them all. Really? It seems that Sir Humphrey Mallard was swimming. <laughs> and Cecily... Hey, Mom. Mom, is Uncle Bob back yet? Did he get any pictures of flying saucers? I've been out the last couple hours. Will you stop all that flying saucer nonsense? Mom, it's not nonsense. Come on, get cleaned up. You're as tight. Listen, Mom, if Mr. Lear says there are flying saucers, there are flying saucers. He didn't say that. He simply said it was within the realm of possibility. Well, okay. There you are. Well, anything is within the realm of... Will you climb up there and see if you can fix that? It's stuck. Sure, Mom. <clears throat> well, goodbye, you two. I've got to hurry and get dressed and pick up Cecily. Oh, oh. After all I've told you about it, Mr. Lear? Poor girl needs help. Well, look, Bill, you, you can't go without saying hello to Margaret and Chuck. Well, okay, but just for a minute. Yeah. Hey, Mom, hey, here come Uncle Bob and Mr. Lear. Holy smoke. What is it? So you don't believe in flying saucers, huh? Oh, did they bring one home? Better than that, they captured the driver. <laughs> Bill, Bill, excuse me. Would you explain your theory of UFO to Chuck? Yeah, Mr. Oh, Mayor, I'm showing sure it. No, he, he really oh, loves that room. kind we'll of thing. Oh, Margaret, honey, uh, we got stuck in a creek and Pamela got a little mud splashed on her. Could you take her up to your room and let her freshen up, please? Yeah, I'd love to. Fine, thank you. Oh, Mr. Collins. Oh, yes. Don't forget to phone the auto club. Y yes, I'm on it. <laughs> thank you. Hello, uh, could you connect me with Miss Cecily Allen's apartment, please? Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Cecily. Bob here. Cecily, look, uh, Bill can't make it, but I'll be there in about five minutes. Bob, we'll Would... be right down. Who's out watching? The bird watcher's daughter while the bird watcher's out watching birds. <laughs> Cec... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that this was Cecily Allen's apartment. It is. Oh, well, I I'm Robert Collins. Uh, she's expecting me. <laughs> Not anymore, old chap. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the light of her life, Sir Humphrey Mallard. Wait a minute, you're not Sir Humphrey Mallard, you're Charles Coburn. <laughs> Sue me, old chap. Swanson was played by Joy Lansing, Pamela Livingstone by Nancy Cope, 
Bill Lear by John Archer, and Cecily Allen by Patricia Cutts. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Okay, Chuck. You can slide out. Well, I can always have it reupholstered, I guess. Now, <laughs> you, you stand by the phone in case your mother calls from Joplin. Gee, I, I sure hope Grandpa isn't hurt too bad. Chuck, when a man his age takes a bad fall, it's generally pretty serious. My gosh. Well, he shouldn't have been out driving a wagon at that age. No, no. I hope Mom can get him well. Yes, I sure hope so too, Chuck. Well, I'll be at the office if you need me. Poor old Grandpa. Missouri, but this here is the best air they got. <laughs> you sure ought to feel better now. Grandpa! Well, Chucky boy, how are you, son? Grandpa, well, what are you doing here? Mom just left to fly to Joplin to take care of you. Yeah, I timed it pretty good, didn't I, son? Your letter said you were hurt. No, no, it didn't, son. Yeah, it said you fell off the wagon last Thursday. Oh, well, that I did. You see, I hadn't had a drop since New Year's. <laughs> the keg of cider hardened on me, and uh, I tapped it. And a few neighbors dropped over. In fact, anyone that had more than two glasses dropped over. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I'll tell you, son. When this here Missouri cider decides to harden. <laughs> Boy, you don't fool around, does it? Grandpa, do you mean you yeah. deliberately tricked Mom into leaving town? Yes, yes I did, son. I'll tell you, your mom is a wonderful woman. She's just wonderful, but she's mighty finicky about her housekeeping. And while I'm here, I'm intending to give a few parties for some old buddies of mine. <laughs> what old buddies? Well, the men that helped me storm San Juan Hill with Teddy Roosevelt. The men of the 1st U.S. Cavalry, volunteers. Uncle Bob's going to be very upset with you, Grandpa. Oh, now, Chucky boy, I don't take orders from that there flyboy chicken colonel. <laughs> he drives one of them push-button airplanes. I think she's a big shot. I'd like to see him ride a horse from here to Cuba. Correct. That's across the ocean. Yeah. When we got there, we had to fight the Spaniards. Uphill, all the way. On a wet horse. <laughs> you know, I'm just a mite hungry. You ain't got nothing to eat, have you? Yeah, Mom left a whole turkey in the refrigerator. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> Not. No. Well, Pamela, what's up? I wish to schedule a sitting for my grandmother. Oh, say, I heard about her. Isn't she the woman that rode horseback all the way from Kansas? 
Just arrived in town two weeks ago. She must be a little old for that kind of riding. Grandmother is in her 80s, but she's still a superb horsewoman. She made the ride from Dodge City to promote her favorite cause. Oh, what's that? The horse's contribution to the opening of the West. I believe this little poem she wrote best explains it. In this age of the atom and jet, the noble horse we must not forget. He carried us west on hooves of iron, and now we must not let him down. <laughs> Superb horsewoman, but lousy poet. <laughs> Bob Collins, photography. Oh, hi, Chuck. No, he hasn't come in yet. No, not yet. If you, want, you want to leave a message for him? Yes. <laughs> Just a second, Chuck wants you. Oh, hello, Pamela. My goodness, what a surprise seeing you. <laughs> hello, Chuck. Uncle Bob, get a grip on yourself. Is it Grandpa? Yeah. Is he in danger, Chuck? He sure is. He's going to cut his throat. Look, I'll... <laughs> what? He's eating turkey with his sword. What are you talking about? Grandpa, he's here. Drove out in his old car. You, you mean all the way from, from, from Joplin? Yeah, yeah. Sending for Mom was just a trick to get her out of the way. Put him on the phone, Chuck. O okay, hold on. Each one carrying a part of his tent. <laughs> Grandpa? Yes. Grandpa, Uncle Bob's on the phone. Chuck, you oh, no, son. I never listen in on other people's conversations. It ain't for that. Now... Would you like to see a picture of me here with Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah, just a minute, Uncle Bob. He's right here. This here. Please, Grandpa. Check it. This is against my principles. Hello, Grandpa? Yeah. Look, just what do you think you're doing? <laughs> well, you don't have to shout, son. It was Chucky's idea that I eavesdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Schulte, uh, oh, what can, what can I do for you, Pamela? No, I mean, I mean professional. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd like you to photograph Grandmother. Oh. You see, the only picture we have of her is one taken with Grandfather and their children. I see, uh, oh, my, that, that's, that's quite a family, isn't it? Uh, uh, Schulte, would you call Chuck, please, right away, it's very important. Well, Pamela, wait a minute, let me see that. It's amazing. children bear a striking resemblance to your grandmother. She wouldn't have it any other way. No? Very strong personality. Uh-huh. Wild as a Kansas jackrabbit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Confidentially, Mr. Collins, this was not a love match. It wasn't? <laughs> you married grandmother and a rebound. Well, it was quite a rebound, wasn't it? <laughs> she was in love with a dashing young cavalry officer. Uh-huh. When he rode off to war, he promised to write, and she promised to wait. Uh-huh. He didn't write, and she didn't wait. No, no, I can see that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I can't get through to check the lines busy. Oh, all right. Uh, just have to go home and straighten it out myself. Uh, excuse me, Pamela, I'll get back to you about photographing your grandmother. Hey, is that the cheeky grandmother? Yes. Hey, that's quite a family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, oh, excuse you me, Grandpa, the phone's off the hook in the hall. Never seen a boy so taken with phone snooping. It's a terrible habit. I don't remember who this was? My, by Joshua! <laughs> my golly! That was took the day I was made a corporal. My my! I was a handsome devil. Even in them days. <laughs> Old Chucky took it. This in here was tooken. <laughs> that mustache. That makes you laugh, don't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it tickled the girls, too. <laughs> it was a lady killer. Even in them days. <laughs> Grandpa, yes, when you were taking your... Now, back here... Pamela Livingstone. That's Pamela Livingstone. <laughs> well, that's that's Annie Brinkley. At least that's who the girl is. I don't remember what the horse's name was. She looks exactly like Pamela Livingstone. 
Well, it could be. Although that's a silly name for a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Annie. My goodness. I ain't seen her for, well, since I rode off to war 60 years ago. You know, I think I owe her a letter. I set a horse like an Indian, that girl. What's that, Grandpa? Oh, I don't remember. There's so much... Oh. oh, yeah, that's a poem that she read to me the day I, I rode off to fight. Yeah. Jackie, will you just read that for me, please? My glasses is a little steamy. I'm just thinking about Annie. <laughs> yeah, come back, Josh, when the battle's won. Yeah. Come back, Josh, when the fighting's done. Yeah. I'll be waiting in old Dodge City yeah. to be your bride so young and anxious. <laughs> Said a horse like an Indian couldn't write poetry for sour apples. But how come you didn't marry her, Grandpa? Oh, she didn't wait for me. No, she married a traveling man. I didn't ride salesman out of Kansas City. Nice enough fellow, but he liked to drink. You know, he was putting up a lightning rod one day and a storm come along. Everybody said that liquor would be the, the end of him. And I want to tell you something, he was really lit up when he went. <laughs> <laughs> you could see him all the way from the courthouse. But check it, you know, I think I'm going to go up and scrub my hide. Say, tell me, did your uncle ever put a zinc tub in that bathroom? Zinc? Uh, oh, oh, no, no, Grandpa, he's got a shower. No, I don't cotton to them things. You turn one knob and you scold and you... Turn the other and you freeze. Well, you have to turn them both on at the same time and then regulate the temperature of the water. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're going to be an engineer to get clean around here. <laughs> well, I'll turn it on and get it all regulated for you. Oh, what would you do with the old station? Sure, would Grandpa. you take the rest of my gear upstairs for me? Sure. Hey, right? there, boy. Here, I'll just... Oh, thank you, son. Yeah, sure, Grandpa. Yeah, I'd better put this away. Oh, the men of San Juan Hill. Up they went. Each one carrying a sword that was dead. What? <laughs> Dog on it. I got turkey dressing in the scabbard. <laughs> I told Teddy not to order these darn things. There's no way to clean them out unless you get a long handled toothbrush. and comes in kind of handy at that. <laughs> Yippee. <laughs> Honey, we better make a quick getaway. So I'll just give you a little shove and we'll start up in gear. I've never seen a soldier in uniform before. Chuck? Oh, hi, Uncle Bob. Where's Grandpa? I think he's in the shower oh. by now. Like 
delay about arranging your photographic sitting. Mr. Collins was called away unexpectedly. Grandpa! Well, howdy there, Shorty, honey. The boss just went home to see you. <laughs> yeah, I know about that. Well, howdy, miss. How do you do? <laughs> I don't think Mr. Collins will be very long. Why don't you just saddle up and stand by, Grant? <laughs> All right, goodbye. Annie! Let me go on. Annie! Why, you ain't changed a day in 60 years, girl. What are you talking about, my good man? Schultz, come here. Look. Would you believe that this here woman is over 85 years old? Now, see here. What's he on? You're still lying about your age, ain't you? Certainly not. Oh, look at that. <laughs> She's had her face lifted so many times she can't look no way but up. <laughs> Who is this man? You mean you don't remember your old sweetheart? The brave boy in blue that rode off to the west to fight? I wish I'd have rode off to the east. I'd have got to Cuba a lot quicker. <laughs> Just a moment. Is it... Could you be the dashing young cavalry officer who promised to write my grandmother? Oh, Lord, did I promise to write to her, too? Uh, was his name Josh Collins? Oh, yes. From Joplin, Missouri? Yes. Well, wait, wait a minute. What did you call her? Pamela. She's the granddaughter of your old sweetheart. You, Annie Brinkley's granddaughter. Yes. My name is Pamela Livingstone. You like that? Named you after a horse. <laughs> I'll go and fetch grandmother immediately. Well, honey, wait, wait a minute. How romantic. What a reunion of old lovers. No, honey, look, look, you... Oh, I ain't interested in no old lovers. I sure didn't come out here to be trapped by no man-hungry widow with ten kids either. Is her back way out of here, Shotsy? You will wait just a second, will you, Grandpa? Shotsy? Mm hmm? You calling Bobby, are you? Why, no. Hello? Uh, look, Grandpa, would you wait just a second? Right here? Wait, wait, just a minute. Right there. Right there. Well, I think it's phone tapping time again. Now, you come out of there, you waterlogged old goat, or I'm going to come in after you. If you can outsmart Margaret, but not me. Hello. Boss, it's Schultze. Oh, hello, Schultze. Your grandfather's here in the studio. I know very... <laughs> what? When I get there, so help me, I'm going to lock that old codger in the dark room. <laughs> yeah, I certainly feel guilty taking a bad habit like this away from Chucky. What am I? Oh, Grandma Collins! <laughs> At your service. <laughs> what is this uniform? What? Well, this is the first United States Cavalry Volunteers. You remember Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders? No, you see, I spent most of my life in Queens. Honey? Oh, yeah, that's right. See, you know, I think I rode through your country one time on the way to Cuba. <laughs> to Queens? Took kind of a roundabout route, you see. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little secret for you. The fella ain't in there. You know where he is? Do I? <laughs> that young scamp don't make a move I don't know about. Give me a hand. Where are we going? To Bobby's house. But I'm supposed to have my picture. Oh, don't you worry about that. I'll blast a glossy up you. Have you read any Missouri cider? No. Good. <laughs> oh, what the heck do you mean he got away? Where did he go? I don't know, boss. He just disappeared. Well, Ingrid was due here at 1 o'clock. Where's she? I don't know. She hasn't shown up yet. Well, it's not like Ingrid. <laughs> you, you, you don't suppose that Grandpa... Whatever it is, I think he would. We better start tracking him down. Yeah, honey, just relax there whilst I load my flash powder. Oh. Say, why don't you just have another glass of cider whilst you're waiting? <laughs> well, I brung this 
All the way from Missouri. Just for you. Yes, I, what did you say it was made for? Just the juice of fresh, wholesome apples. I wonder why I'm so lightheaded. Yeah, well, that's probably because you're a Swede. I don't recollect ever seeing a dark-headed Swede. <laughs> well, skull. <laughs> you, or as you say in your country, here's mud in your eye. <laughs> oh, ain't that wonderful? I tell you, nature's got a Grandpa, wonderful gift. Don't you hear the bell ringing? They must have been vintage apples. You don't usually hear bells ring until after the third glass. But I believe this is the telephone. By God, you're right. It does sound sort of flat. Yeah, cider bells generally got more melody to them. <laughs> after three glasses, I've heard the Missouri waltz just as clear as if Harry was picking it out. <laughs> Josh Collins talking. He finally answered, boss. Oh. Grandpa. Well, hello there, Bubby boy. Grandpa, listen, do you have Ingrid with you? Well, yes, I was just having a nice, friendly glass of cider. Grandpa, you're not giving her any of that Ozark lightning. <laughs> Wait right there. I'm on my way home. Oh, God, it's your Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Wait, Wait a minute. Look, Where's Paul. he at? Where's who? Well, good land of Goshen. You, you're, you're Josh family. Collins, it's, it's you. No, no, wait, wait a minute. You, you have me. You know, I'm shaving just... off that mustache no, listen. made you look some 60 year no, younger. No, excuse let me, let me explain. Steady down me. there, boy. What, what, just a Young second. Young woman. Schultz, do something. You, you believe that this here fella's now a 90 year old? I can. Now, wait a minute. Now, listen to me. No, honey. We'll just snap a quick one here, and then we'll throw the rest of that turkey in the hamper, and we'll head for the beach. You think that's all right for Mr. Collins? <laughs> You bet it is. Now, you just... You know something? Doggone it, I've lost my flash powder someplace. <laughs> Grandpa, that's apple juice. Yeah. <laughs> All right now, honey. Just give me a nice, bright, friendly grin. That's it. How about a little of that cheesecake there? <laughs> right now. Hold it! I think you're gonna like this, Chromo. <laughs> Easy. Now, let's get the turkey and we'll head for the beach. Let me... Ingrid, <laughs> honey. I'll be dog whittled. I finally seen myself a dark headed squeak. We both will be with the same man. If we hurry, we can catch him. Yeah. Just you wait till I get my hands on that old gray wolf. No, believe me, I want to get him first. Darn it, I forgot. What's the matter, sir? My, my car, my nephew has it. Excuse me. Uh, Schulte, uh, honey, would you call us a cab, please? Oh, no, no, Sonny, we won't need no taxi. I got transportation parked right out in front. Oh, oh, never, never mind, Chelsea. Oh, elevator, please. Come on, Grandma. I'm seeing Mrs. Livingstone. Come on, Ingrid! Did I get all this food down? Oh, yeah, honey, you look like a grime golden. Yeah, there's just a little fallout on top there. Don't you worry, though. A dip in the ocean will fix that. Oh, you just step right down there, honey. That's it. All right, Grandpa. Yes, Paul, you ain't going to get away from me. All right, wait. Oh, wait. Grandpa, wait a minute. Stop. So, wait a minute, Mrs. Livingstone. Stop this thing and let me off. Are they gaining on us? <laughs> yes. They're ahead what? west. We're going up to the ocean. Hang on, Sonny. Hey, Tony. Doc. You just dumped the rest of this here cider in the gas tank. <laughs> you lose them.
of Pamela Livingstone and Grandma were played by Nancy Culp, and Ingrid Good played herself. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. Chelsea, honey, I'll be back in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Okay, boss. Yeah, say, boss, uh, uh, do you mind if I take a coffee break while you're gone? Not only do I not mind, Schultze, it's on me. Ten dollars for coffee? Treat your friends. <laughs> boss, what happened? The phone call. You've inherited money. The phone call was from my accountant, Harry Morton. He just closed the books on the most successful year we've ever had. Wonderful. $7,426.80 over last year's gross income. Oh, well, congratulations. Schultz, honey, I didn't do it all alone. This little head ran the office. These little eyes read the correspondence. These little ears took the dictation. I also shot off my mouth considerably. <laughs> Feed my gross income. So call Chuck and ask him what he'd like for his birthday. Right, boss. Well, and give yourself a bonus. Oh, now, boss, you're too generous. Just gave you ten bucks for coffee. Yeah? Well, here is another five for Danish. <laughs> hey, I gotta move. I told Harry Morton I'd meet him at the Internal Revenue Office in ten minutes. This year I can pay my tax in one lump. <laughs> Boss. Oh, I called Chuck, and here's a list of the things he'd like for his birthday. Cashmere jacket, slacks, alligator loafers, money clip with money. Oh, <laughs> here's a change in the coffee break. Well, you're very large with the secretaries in this building. Sixty cents? Yeah. You spent nine dollars and forty cents for coffee? You said treat my friends. Nobody's got that many friends. <laughs> Bob Collins, photography. Oh, hi, Chuck. <laughs> oh, Chuck, I, I don't... Chuck, I... Okay, bye-bye, Chuck. That was your nephew calling from the store. He's seen something else he needs. <laughs> I've seen something else the entire family needs. A lesson in economy. Believe me, they're gonna get it. Right now. Margaret? Battle stations. <laughs> yeah, it's income tax time again. This year he gave it to the government in one lump. The trouble is, the government gave him one right back. <laughs> Carol, listen, if you find Chuck, warn him that the annual economy wave just rolled in. His Uncle Bob's on a warpath. Oh, hi, Uncle Bob. I took the liberty of picking out my birthday presents and charging them to your account. It ran into a few chips, but you know the saying, dress right, you can't afford not to. <laughs> Dig this crazy chapeau. And feel the quality of that cashmere. Is that the wildest? <laughs> and these, these alligator loafers are the greatest Italian import since Gina Lolo Brigida. <laughs> And notice how these, these cashmere socks delicately blend. <laughs> Uncle Bob, why are you putting everything on the table? But Carol, you got to find Chuck. The last time I saw him, he was headed downtown to pick out some clothes. <laughs> Don't 
be a budget meeting in my office at 12 noon. Bring your canceled checks and your own lunch. Where are you going? To close out my charge accounts. I'm sorry, Carol. Listen, if you find him, be sure... <laughs> what happened? I'm not sure, Mom. One minute I was the best dressed man in town and then... Pow! <laughs> Set for the budget meeting, boss. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, now let's. You two are almost as funny as George and Gracie. George Rapp and Gracie Dillinger. They look like the poor people of Paris. Well, they have just become the poor people of Hollywood. Oh, Bob, where's your sense of humor? It vanished with my money. And that's what we're here for, to find out what happened to my money. Are these all the cancel checks? Yes, sir. These are household and these are business. Good, we'll start with the household. Now, please understand this. I am not here to point an accusing finger at anybody. Am I going to ball? <laughs> what are you doing? Making sandwiches. You said to bring our lunch. Want one? I... <laughs> no, thank you. Like mustard with it, maybe. Yeah, have you got any? No! <laughs> We'll take the first household. Check. Bushnell's Meat Market, $73. You spent $73.80 for meat in one month. That doesn't sound right. Let's see. Just... Oh, this isn't one month. Oh. It's one week. <laughs> the Air Force reunion was on. You had a bunch of your buddies over for a barbecue. I, a barbecue? What do we barbecue, chinchillas? $73.80? You said you wanted Kansas City steak. Well, I didn't say I wanted them brought out in a compartment in the super cheap. $73. The next time we have the gang over, order some cheaper steaks. Well, we tried that once and two guests broke a tooth. Well, they pay the dentist bills. I pay the meat bills. <laughs> and you could learn some household tricks about saving money, you know. Like what? Like putting the bread on the table first and letting the gas fill up on that. Well, then they need more butter. Then heat the butter knives! <laughs> now, the Arcadia Music Mart. $19 and... Chuck, what is this? Sounds like something you bought. Yeah, that's a diamond needle for the record player. You bought a diamond needle? They save money in the long run. You, you, you... <laughs> My poor guests are breaking their teeth on western steaks and he's buying diamond needles. They outlast hundreds of ordinary needles. We're heating the butter knives, but he's buying diamond needles. Uncle Bob, they play over 4,000 records. You bought 4,000 records? <laughs> well, that's how long a diamond needle lasts. And besides, you get better tone quality. Oh, and that is so important with those records that you listen to, isn't it? Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Wow. For that, he needs a diamond needle. You can get the same tone quality with a rusty nail. <laughs> Uncle Bob, that's a great tune. What is it? <laughs> that's from the new Fats Domino album, Music to Do Your Homework By. <laughs> I gotta buy that. You're buying nothing! <laughs> this family is retrenching, and you're the bottom man in the trench! <laughs> A 
I'm going without lunch, and he's buying diamond needles. <laughs> oh, this cop's anything. This is... If this isn't the stupidest waste of money, if anything I've ever heard of in my life. What is it? A check for $25 to the florist marked Flowers for Gardener. <laughs> now, if that isn't carrying coals to Newcastle. <laughs> $25. I'm going without eating. We're sending flowers to our gardener. Bob, I... Margaret, if you don't mind, I have a few things to say. <laughs> Chuck, you're an able-bodied boy. You come home from college every weekend. Why can't you do the gardening? I do. Why? We don't have a gardener. <laughs> well, then I'll be very happy to hear why I'm holding my hand to check for $25. Mark flowers for our gardener. That's for the flowers you sent Ava Gardner. <laughs> oh, you're a fine example for your son. What did I you do? You misspelled her name, that's what you did. If you hadn't put an E in it, I wouldn't have opened my big fat mouth. <laughs> and now we'll take up the office account. Well, check him, boss. Well, okay. Sure, boss. Help yourself. Well, I'll see you charming people later. And just where do you think you're going? Time for my coffee break. Now, that's the first expense we're going to cut out. I pay for my own coffee. And I pay you for the time that you spend down there gabbing with those other Danish pastry hounds. <laughs> From now on, you're going to make your own coffee and right here. Well, I like to socialize with the girls. Then socialize with them here. You got a big pot. Not just a dark Coffee pot. pot in the studio. <laughs> hey, does that mean that we'll furnish coffee for all the secretaries? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it means. And at ten cents a cup. <laughs> you can't make money photographing people, then maybe we'll make it selling coffee. Oh, now, Bob, really? Margaret, if you have some other suggestion for solving my economic problems, I'll be very happy to listen to them. Hey, I've got one. Hey. Good. It'll cut your tax in half. Yeah, yeah let's hear it. Get married. <laughs> Any other suggestions? <laughs> I like Josie's, yeah. And that diamond needle you're so worried about, you can make into an engagement ring. Yeah, I don't care if it's little. <laughs> yeah. Chosen, give me that stack of accounts that we're going to give to the collection agency. And don't come back without the money. Well, I guess I can sell apples on three corners or take in washing. <laughs> well, get going, Chuck. Well, what do I get for doing this? You get to keep the diamond needle. Oh. <laughs> What's this for? Apples and soap. Get busy. <laughs> That's the last time I go out with him. What do you do for his nothing? The last time I go out with him. <laughs> I shall say. Oh, I'm good. Good. Just drop your dime in the petty cash box. Very good. What? No Danish? Hmm. Never mind the Danish. Where's that doll of a boss? What do you expect for 10 cents? A floor show? Oh, I'd pay more than that to see Colonel Dreamboat. Oh, me too, especially if he's working on one of those beautiful models. He's working on the books, and he's in a terrible mood, so we can do him a favor and just... Chelsea, look. No wonder I'm losing money. Here, I'll... Oh, hell, hello. <laughs> what is this? Coffee break, boss. <laughs> see, here's the money. Never mind. 40 cents, 
Josie, that won't buy the sugar. Boss, I'm just getting started. I gotta compete with the coffee shop downstairs. Well, if this is the best you can do, then cut out the coffee break. Boss. Upstairs and downstairs. Boss, you you should... can spend that time working on the books. Well, I want you to see this mistake you made here. Parking, $50. The fee for parking is 50 cents. Yeah, not this one, boss. You were parked with this girl whose father's a cop, and he came along and... Parking at 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, don't let it happen again. Me? Yes, you. After this, let me know if there's a cop in the family. My old man's a job and salesman. He's never around. Uh, my father's around, but Mama won't let him look. Uh, down, girls. Down, down, down. <laughs> Boss, don't forget you're interviewing new models this afternoon. Well, then let's clear the decks for action. Action? Now you're talking, doll. I'll give you just two minutes. It's not much, but I'll take it. <laughs> To finish your coffee, out here! <laughs> Will you please grab your own boss? Mine's in a bad mood. Yeah, but yours looks better growling than mine just smiling. <laughs> oh, hi, Belle. I told you to lay off. It's income tax time. He should be in the oil business like my boss. He can deduct for research and exploration. <clears throat> Well, my boss does a lot of research and exploration, but he can't deduct it. Schultz, you, you just gave me a wonderful idea. What did I say? Something about research and exploration. Schultz, thanks to you, I may revise the entire tax setup. Research and exploration? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Research. <laughs> Exploration. Yeah. Must have been the way she said it. <laughs> Boss, don't forget the first model will be here at 3 o'clock. Yeah, well, I'll be back. Would you like her to be in shorts? Would you like to be working here tomorrow? <laughs> Interviewing a new model, huh? Boy, that's really something I'd pay to see. <laughs> Me too. Come on, girls, drink up. I'm gonna have to clear out the whole place for... <laughs> What's the matter? Huh? Oh, nothing. All right, girls. <laughs> the next coffee break will be at 3 o'clock, but... Now, don't tell anybody that there will be a floor show at that time. <laughs> What makes you think your dates are deductible? Well, uh, because they, they, they come under the heading of research and, and exploration. Well, how do you figure that? You see, I, I make my living photographing beautiful girls. Yeah. Uh, now, if I'm to compete with such top flight photographers as uh, Paul Hesse and Wally Sewell, then I have to find more beautiful girls than, than they find, you see. Yeah. Well, naturally, this means looking night and day. Yeah. Well, I'm not asking for a break in the daytime, but this, this night looking becomes terribly expensive, you see. Yeah. Uh, now, on the surface, these uh, nocturnal expenditures uh, probably may not seem to be legitimate deductions. Yeah. But I'm sure that you'll agree that they are. Now, <laughs> that they are. <laughs> you didn't say yeah that time. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, Mr. Jollison. Yes, Mr. Collins? We come to the... Excuse me, all, all my friends call me Bob. Go on, Mr. Collins. <laughs> um, now, let me draw a parallel with the oil industry. Now, in order for an oil man to stay in business, he must continually be searching for um, new sources of supply. Yeah. Now, by granting him uh, certain old tax benefits, the, the Internal Revenue um, helps him conduct that search. Yeah. Well, now, I, I have to be continually searching for more and more beautiful girls. Yeah. Well, uh, all, all I ask is that you just give me a little help. 
I'm game, if you can talk my wife into it. <laughs> That's kind of funny there. <laughs> you wouldn't think so if you knew my wife. <laughs> oh, Mr. Jollison. I'll bet she's a very charming... <laughs> yeah, I see, see what you mean. She is a little uh, 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 formidable looking. <laughs> That's her daughter. But... <laughs> now, shall we get back to your problem? Uh, well, yes. Uh, now that you understand my situation, I only hope that you'll give my request uh, a little uh, consideration. Tell me, is photography your only source of income? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My entire revenue is, is derived from my profession as a photographer. Well, I'll get back to you as soon as I check with my chief. Oh, good. Thanks. And give her my regards. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry to say this to you, honey, but I'm only interested in models with experience. <laughs> and, and this is a wonderful place to get it. <laughs> what did you say your name was again? <laughs> okay. Curtain going up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 okay, now remember, 25 cents entitles you to one cup of coffee, one look, and makes you eligible for the $10 kissing pool. <laughs> I'll take mine out looking. <laughs> Uh, uh, seconds. Yeah. Those wishing seconds must go to the end of the line. Oh, have a heart. End. End. Is this it? Hold it, Charlie. Where do you think you're going? I want to see Mr. Collins. Well, so do the rest of us. <laughs> go to the end of the line. Well, where is it? In the parking lot. <laughs> well, just, I just want to... Do you really think I'll do for the lipstick ad? Why? Oh, yeah, you, you got just the figure for it. <laughs> Give me that just kissed look. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's something wrong with it. We, we, we've got to find some way to make it look more authentic. I don't know what we're going to do. You mean Mr. Collins charges 25 cents for coffee and the sideshow? Most of them didn't even take the coffee. He must be making a lot of money. Oh, he'll clear 50 or 60 bucks easy. I understand. I guess it's the only way to make it authentic. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm just surprised this is the first one. What's that? Well, she just won the Collins Kissing Lottery. Congratulations. Thank you, Chelsea. Hey, Miss Schultz, look at this. $176 for the Collins Collection Agency. Collection Agency? Oh, good work, Chuck. I'll see you later. Got to get home to the Collins Laundry. Hey, <laughs> Chuck, did the Collins Fruit Company sell any apples? I don't know. I'll ask Mom. <laughs> Hello. May I help you? You have. Get me the police. <laughs> well, now that you've explained, of course, I understand. It was just one of those jokes that snowballed. That's it, exactly. One of those situations where the circumstantial evidence kept piling up. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Because it made a fellow look suspicious, even though he was innocent as a newborn babe. Whole thing in a nutshell. I'm so glad that you understand, Henry. Bob, I understand perfectly. <laughs> Just take a few days to convince them in Washington.
part of S.J. Jollison was played by Charles Lane, Bertha by Rose Marie, Gertrude by Fatty Chapman, and the model by Dorothy Johnson. This is Bill Baldwin speaking. I think you're going to like this picture. Love That Bob. Starring Bob Cummings. He's always surrounded by those beautiful models. He won't pay any attention to us. Don't worry. This morning it will be different. I happen to know he's photographing a layout on farm machinery. Mom. Farm machinery? Uncle Bob? That's right, Chuck. At this moment he's photographing a tractor. A tractor? Hey, come on. Okay, now, big, bright, bright little answer. Remember, you farmer's daughters have been emancipated by mechanized equipment. That's a big, bright, happy? Good, fine. Thank you very much. All right, girls. Now, you can relax. <laughs> Margaret, well. Oh, hi, Jack. Well, Bob. Those are farmer's daughters? Yeah. A few more of those will bring back the traveling salesman. Huh? <laughs> well, well, what can I do for you, Margaret? Uh, Bob, Chuck needs your help. Okay, Chuck. What is it, son? <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> What's on your mind? How do I get to be a traveling salesman? <laughs> Listen, I think we'd better talk in the office. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Now, Chuck, when... <laughs> In here! On the double! Margaret, I'm so I'm busy. Sorry. Yes, Why did you... No, no. Wait. Gina, I hope I didn't get it fixed. No, not you. Him! For heaven. Let's talk in the studio. Chuck. All right, Chuck. Now, what is your... <laughs> Chuck? Margaret, I... I can tell you about Chuck's problem. It's about that record that he made. This is your idea, not mine. I told you Chuck has no voice. But, Bob... I only helped him because Ozzie Nelson needled me into it. But the record company... But they can't sue me. I've checked my lawyer. I <laughs> think it's gonna sell. I've heard it, and boy, does it's... Oh, sell. <laughs> Margaret. You, you mean to tell me that these people actually believe that people will pay money for a thing like this? Yes. But it needs promotion. The people who buy those records don't know who Chuck is. Or where to find him. And if he's smart, he'll keep it that way. Margaret, you listen to me for half a minute. Half a minute. The record company has agreed to pay a three cent royalty to Chuck on each record sold. All right, let's pretend he's been a big smash and he sold a hundred. Here's his three bucks. Now take Elvis and scram. <laughs> and then the chorus comes in with a big echo chamber finish. Oh, hey, I think you got a hit record there. I'll buy it. I there, you hear that? that? So I owe him another six cents. Mom, <laughs> is Uncle Bob going to help promote my record? Well... Boy, I'll bet you've got some swell ideas on what to do with it. Yeah, I, I got a couple of beauties, Chuck. <laughs> now, look, I'm so busy. You two run along. Let me get back to work, won't you, please? Will you be home for lunch? Will you? Sure, I'll be there rehearsing. Just remembered an appointment. <laughs> well, I'll see you, Chuck. <laughs> no, Martin. Uh, you ring for the elevator, Chuck. Listen, we're his family. His first record is coming out. Don't you think that this is the time for us to get behind him? Well, I think that's the safest place to get, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Margaret. <laughs> hey, Mom, you know who just went into that office? Who? George Burns. Really? Yeah. 
Hey, I'd like to talk to him. You know, his son Ronnie's doing wonderfully on record. I'll say. Well, oh, he's probably busy now. I don't want to bother him. Come on, Chuck. Thanks, Tab. The fleet lovers are bringing him the wind is worn as it's passing by. Oh, uh. Why don't Look, you help him, why boss? Don't, why sure, don't you? he's a nice boy. And he's got a good voice, too. Yeah, I'm trying good. to tell you. Just wait a little girl is bashful and just shower. <laughs> you call that a good voice? It's pathetic. And the sorriest song. Bob, George! <laughs> Son of a gun, how are you? Fine, fine. My fine. goodness, yes, sir. I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. All right. I, I guess i better send the girls into the studio. They're a little distracting. Oh, no, no, they don't bother me at all. <laughs> okay. By the way, George, how's Gracie? Who? Your, your wife, Gracie. Oh, oh, I played bridge with him last night. Oh, he's fine, fine. <laughs> Quick. Well? Yes, I don't have Thanks for that favor, Bob. No, 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 no George. George. <laughs> Very pretty girls. Run of the mill. Well, the mills are turning out a much better product since I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, here's the favor, Bob. Yes. I know it's out of your line, but I wonder if you'd photograph this for me. Oh, sure, sure, George. It's uh, Ronnie's check for royalties. Oh, oh. First record. Sold a few hundred, twenty-seven dollars. Not bad. You, uh, you left out a few zeros. Uh, Oh, I see. Took twenty-seven hundred. Hey. Now take your thumb away. Now read the whole thing. <laughs> twenty-seven thousand dollars. Twenty-seven thousand dollars from his first record. And we're hoping his next one will be a hit. But jo <laughs> George, twenty-seven. Well, no wonder you want a picture. Well, well I, you I see, you know how sentimental Gracie is, and this being Ronnie's first check, she wants to put it in the scrapbook. Oh, sure. <laughs> so I thought if you could photograph it, we could put that in the scrapbook, and I could take care of the money. <laughs> but what about Ronnie? He can always look in his mother's scrapbook. <laughs> St. George, you know, this kind of gives me a... Uh, you, you know my nephew, Chuck McGraw. Chuck, of course. He, he made a record of his own. And I was just wondering, you think a thing like this could happen to him? It all depends. Is it, uh, is it a good song? No, it's one of those crazy rock and roll things. Has he, has he got a good voice? No. no. Mm -hmm. Can you understand the lyrics when he sings? Not much. No. He's got a smash. <laughs> Chuck, your lunch is ready. No, I'm not hungry, Mom. Making your favorite dessert, fresh cherry pie. Sorry, Mom, nothing sounds good. Don't be discouraged just because Claudia Mom... wasn't coming home. If he dares make one single sarcastic crack about your singing, I'm going. Al is my favorite recording star. <laughs> I have been the recipient of this piece of goo. I'm tired of your disparaging cracks about Chuck's record. Well, Margaret, I, I think it's going to be a big seller. I warn you. Seller. No M. Oh, you do? I, I think he's going to make a lot of money. Honest, Uncle Bob? I think what... I don't know if it's honest, but it's legal. <laughs> well, what changed your mind? Up till now, you've done nothing but discourage uh, him. Margaret, see, I, I was only testing Chuck to see if he was made of the right stuff. I mean, nobody wants to back a quitter. You, oh, I'm not a quitter, Uncle Bob. No. no. With you to help me, I'll rehearse That's night fine. and day. Breakfast, yes, lunch, sir. and dinner. I'll never Shut. quit. I'll keep Shut. on singing as... Shut up! <laughs> There's a little quitter in the best of us, you know. <laughs> now, please, let, let's put our heads together and see if we can figure out an intelligent promotion campaign. You know, the record company says that the people who make a hit are the disc jockeys. And you know yeah. Fred Beck. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, Hans Han about there's a big thing about him and Variety. Yeah, he was voted the DJ who picked the most hits. I'll show you. Now, listen to me. All you have to do is call Fred Beck and ask him to Margaret, play Margaret, those record. guys get 500 calls a day for some silly thing like this. Oh. We've got to have an entirely different approach. That, that, that won't do it. Yeah, let's see. Um, I know. Get your prettiest model to pretend to go for him, see? And he's all mellowed up, and you can well, ask him anything. It, he's it, soft, it, he's in the mood, me. you can... Wait. <laughs> I no. Have you ever seen Fred Beck? No, I haven't, but I... Here I've it is, Uncle Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this will give you an idea. 
Uh, can you imagine this man um, believing that one of my beautiful models has flipped over him? I don't think he looks so bad. Oh, Margaret, come on. I mean, Fred's a nice guy, but he's got about as much sex appeal as a cold poached egg. <laughs> Listen. Come to think of it, the last time I saw a mouth like that, it had a hook in it. Oh. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love Fred Beck. He's a wonderful guy. He's very intelligent. But a lady killer? He peps up a party by leaving. <laughs> Your line and your models, you could convince him he's a Casanova. Margaret, men cannot be flattered like women. They can't? Of course not. They're far too intelligent to swallow it. <laughs> well, I admit no ordinary fellow could convince him, but, Bob, nobody could call you ordinary. Well, that's true, Uncle Bob. You're the greatest. I always said it was a great oh. loss to politics. And you said it was a because a spellbinder like you could sway millions. Yeah, but Uncle Listen Bob could have been governor. Governor, he could have been senator. Yeah, even president. Why, sure. Oh, hold it. Who do you two think you're kidding? Well... Please give me credit for a little intelligence. <sighs> okay. I couldn't be elected president. I'm a bachelor. Colin? Fred Beck. <laughs> Bob Collins Photography. Oh, yeah, Joe. Okay, thanks a lot. Bob, the uh, boss. Yes, sir. Fred Beck's on his way up. You all set in there? Good. Now, all the girls are brief. Now, this is important. It's up to you to get the ball rolling. All right, boss. All right, good job. Good job. Excuse me, miss. Would you tell Mr. Collins that Fred's here? Certainly. Boss, Fred McMurray to see you. <laughs> I'm afraid you've made a mistake. I'm not Fred McMurray. Y yes, Shelton. Oh, Fred. How are you? So Boss, nice to see you. I know it's against the rules, but can I ask him for his autograph? Shelton, this is not Fred McMurray. This is Fred Beck. Oh, the disc jockey? Of course. You, you saw his picture, remember? Here in Variety. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Fred. This is my assistant, Schultz. Hi, Schultz. Gee, Mr. Beck, this picture of variety doesn't look like you at all. Yeah, why did you give him a passport photo, Fred? You should have had a nice portrait for this. That is a portrait. Wally Sewell took her. You're kidding. Oh, come on, Fred. I'll make a nice picture but of you. But, Bob, uh, Sewell spent half a day on that picture. That's the best he could come up with. Oh, but, Fred, this is ridiculous. Why, he didn't begin to bring out your charm, personality, and, and, and sex appeal. My what? <laughs> well, well je ne sais quoi, animal magnetism. Animal magnetism. What did he drink for lunch? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, you got it. It's right here in your eyes, in your face. That, that undefinable something that... I tell you what, let me photograph it and I'll show it to you. Bob, I've got the kind of face you forget in a crowd of two. <laughs> well, it's nice to have met you, Schultzie. You keep your boss out of the sun for a few days, and you'll be all right. So long. Fred, right, won't you reconsider, please? Goodbye, Mr. Collins. Oh, no, Peggy, look, don't go now. I want to talk to you. Sorry, I'm late. Well, could I call you tonight? Sorry, I'm busy. How about tomorrow? Bob, can't you get it through your head that I'm simply not interested? But now, look, leave me alone. Oh, forgive me. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'm not. My name is Peggy Davis. Uh, my name is, uh, uh, Fred Beck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> jockey. Well, um... Wow. You don't look at all like you sound. Really? Yes. On radio, you don't sound sexy at all. <laughs> Will you get lost? <laughs> May I ask you a favor? Of course. Come over here. Oh, now, just one moment. This happens to be a public office. Oh, go take a picture. 
I wonder if you play some records of my favorite singers. Who? Just for me. Who are they? Perry Como, Jimmy Rogers, Chuck McDonald. There are lots of them, really. I don't have to... Uh, uh, who was that last one? Chuck McDonald. His new record just came out, and it's wonderful. What's it called? Pretty baby Oh. Say maybe Oh. To daddy Oh. On the patio tonight. <laughs> That's terrific. Yeah, I, I heard that one, too. I hate to admit this, but I haven't seen it yet. You'll play it for me, won't you? If I can find it. But in case you have any trouble, you can borrow mine. Here's my address. <laughs> Don't let him see it. Oh, Peggy, please, dear. Will you get out of my hair? But, Peggy, won't you... <laughs> How come you don't go for Bob? I thought all you models flipped over him. Not me. I like a man with... <laughs> well, bye-bye for now. Play my record for me. Peggy? Yes, Freddy? What's AM? Animal magnetism. <laughs> Lousy Sewell missed me completely. Oh, Bob. Oh, yes, ma'am. Let's get a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's just wonderful, Josie. Yeah, hang on just a minute, will you? Uh, three models have already requested your record, and Mr. Beck is going to feature Pretty Baby all this afternoon. Oh, Mom, that's just hilarious. You should see him. <laughs> get him to plug the flip side, too. Uh, the flip side? Yeah. Uh, what's that title? Yeah, uh, Launchy Raunchy Rocket, Take My Haunchy Raunchy Baby into Upper Outer Orbit with Me. <laughs> It's all on the same record. <laughs> okay, Margaret, I'll have to call you back. The leading lady of the last act just walked in. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay. Oh, sensational. Are they ready in there for me, dear? The stage is all yours, Marilyn. Uh, Do your stuff. Darling. <sighs> it's fine. Now, let, let's try to get one this time, Fred, please. I'm sorry for all the delays, Bob, but those... Uh, Girls, just keep, uh... Well, hello. How about an introduction? How do you do? I'm Bob Collins. How do you? Him. Hi. My name's Gwendolyn Hollywood 7 Oh, oh come on now, Fred. Turn it off, will you? Turn what off? Well, you know. The AM. <laughs> Young lady, what do you want? I'm here for a bathing suit layout. Are uh, you the male model I'm posing with? Are you kidding? He's a disc jockey. Oh, my name's Fred Beck. I'm afraid I didn't catch your phone number. Hollywood 7? Oh, oh no. now, Fred, cut it out, will you please? You know, I listen to your program all the time. I just heard a record I'd love you to play for me. It, it's by some new singer, uh, Buck McConnell or something. Oh, uh, Chuck McDonald? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Peter Potter just picked it as his top pop platter parade possibility. You mean that hillbilly has already played it? I gotta get to this video. That record will be ahead before I hear it. But, but Fred, wait a minute. Fred, Fred, what about the picture? Later, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gwendolyn, you were wonderful. Thanks a million, baby. Oh. <laughs> Gonna take me driving tonight? Oh, I, I can't. I promise, Peggy. <laughs> sure fooled Mr. Beck, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Be awful mad if he found out the truth, wouldn't he? <laughs> Gonna take me driving tonight? I sure am. <laughs> Bob, I'm sorry that trying to help Chuck got you into so much trouble. Honey, I'm not in any trouble at all. But you promised Gwendolyn you'd take her driving, and you also promised Peggy you'd take her driving. Yes, yes, that's right, Marty. Well, what are you gonna do? I'm going to take them driving. Together at the same time? Yes, yes. Two jealous girls? How are you going to manage that? Margaret, I have always operated upon the theory 
that Voltaire was right when he said, Il est incroyable que les gens puissent accepter ces idiocies. Huh. My French is a little rusty. Could you help me? I. Uh... Well, literally, it means you'd be surprised how much baloney people will swallow. <laughs> now, Bob. Yes, sir. I got the trunk wedged in the front seat of your car. Oh, fine, fine. Thank what? you. What? I've been listening to Fred Beck in your car radio, and he's played my record four times. Oh, hey, wait a minute. He'll be off the air in ten minutes. I've got to be at the studio to pick him up when he gets out. Bob, I don't get it. Fred Beck, a trunk, and two girls. How are you going to... Margaret, just leave it to me. Uh, me and Voltaire. <laughs> Voltaire? What's he got to do with Uncle Bob? They're both expert bologna slicers. No, no, really, Fred. I, I just started out to deliver this trunk, and I just happened accidentally to come by the studio as, as you came out. Don't and... give me that balloon. No, no, but really, Fred. Ah, come on, I... Bob. What's the angle this time? Oh, you son of a gun. You, you always see through me, don't you? <laughs> okay, I'll confess. I, I just hope you'd tell me where Peggy lives. I'm sorry, Bob. She asked me not to. Oh, please, <laughs> I've got such a yen for this girl. You've got dozens of girls. Yeah, but you know how it is. You, you always want the one you can't get. <laughs> Come on, Fred, please. Please, please tell me, wh where, where does she live? Okay, by accident, you just happened to turn onto her street. No kidding! <laughs> wow. Gee, I, I hope I can talk her into going driving. Uh, tell her I'm in the car. That'll do it. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. You're just a wonderful guy. Just, just wonderful. <laughs> hey, Fred, you know, an idea just struck me. I know. Why don't we pick up Gwendolyn for you? Hmm? Okay, I'll stop and we'll put this trunk in the trunk compartment. Yeah, that's a good... No, no, wait, that won't work, Fred. You see, because the, the trunk compartment's all full of suitcases. Well, where will Gwendolyn sit? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, now, she could sit back here uh, with, with Peggy and me until we uh, deliver the trunk. <laughs> okay, Peggy? I've got a better idea. All right. Why not deliver the trunk and then pick up Gwendolyn? She's got it. Let us... No, no, honey, that, that, that won't work, you see, because this trunk's got to go all the way down to the beach, and, and Gwendolyn just lives down here in the next block. Please? Okay. <laughs> That's it. Keep watching. The first girl that sees a falling star gets a nice present. I hope the present is this trunk. What was that, Fred? Uh, we're almost to the ocean, Bob. Which way do you want me to turn? Toward the moon. What? Oh, uh, that, that's the way I, I tell direction. Just turn to the left, Fred. Oh, keep, keep watching the stars, girls. Keep watching. I'll see you in my dreams. Hold you in my dreams. Bob. So, yes, Fred? That voice. Somebody yell at us? Uh, your voice, that singing. I didn't know you were a vocalist. Oh, <laughs> but you are. He has a beautiful voice, doesn't he, girl? Oh, yes, you do. Sure do. <laughs> well, I, I just sing when I relax, you know. Well, so does Como, and look at him. <laughs> yeah, Harry, but I, I just kid around with it, you know. You ought to kid around and make an album. Am I right, girls? Oh, what a <laughs> <an> album. <laughs> Bob, I know what the public wants. They're tired of rock and roll. They're ready for a romantic singer. That's you, Bob. Yeah. Sing some more. Really? <laughs> okay. I'll see you in my dreams. And I'll hold you. Fred, Fred, look, keep, keep your eye on the road there. Uh, but, but, Bob, the wind, it, it carries your voice back. Oh. Dear Fred. You hear that back there all right, Fred Boy? <laughs> oh, just great, Bob. I'll put it down for the album. Girls, uh, do girls ever read Voltaire? In my I don't think so, no. You said it's very rewarding. <laughs>